quarantine and applied that to if they have immediate family members who either work in the district or students in the district, we have asked that they self-quarantine those individuals. And our community has been most cooperative in doing so. I think that is a good example of some things that are a little beyond the CDC or DHEC recommendation, but things we believed were necessary to undertake in order to best ensure the safety of the close to 90,000 people that come into our schools every day, students and employees. I think you will also notice, based on the information we've sent to you over time and the actions we have taken that are very apparent to the public, that for several days, a number of days, going back several weeks, we've begun to take steps that would appear, I think, to anyone observing those steps to be moving closer and closer to what we thought was likely inevitable, which is the closing of school, hoping that that might not ultimately be necessary, but realizing that it likely could happen. We wanted to step down into that status, at the same time trying to ensure that we do everything at all possible to ensure safety and well-being. As you all know, the governor made a decision this afternoon to, to effectively close all schools throughout the state of South Carolina. We were very close, quite honestly, to taking that action, but it likely would have been in too early next week, allowing us one or two days of student attendance to finalize the things we need to finalize related to e-learning. We don't have that option. We can work with that. We uh, have constructed uh, a great deal of actions over the past several weeks. Although we have a pandemic plan as part of our emergency plans, we have to fill that in. And pandemic, like other emergency situations, cannot all be planned ahead of time. We have the framework there, but we have to fill in that framework based on the extremely fluid situations that occur. And this is an example of a very fluid situation that has changed rapidly and often over a period of time. So we'll make adjustments to ensure that we get the devices out to students that don't currently have them at home, that they get other things that they need to have. In fact, you have, we sent to you and printed out for your place in case you didn't get a chance to read it electronically, our latest direction to principals based on our ability now to confirm the governor's uh, actions at his four o'clock press conference, which provides our path forward this coming week to ensure that we get the devices out, that we have finalized the instructional materials for all students, including the ability and the availability of printed copies. As you know, our, our youngest students, K one and two, Okay, kindergarten, first and second grade, do not have devices. That was an intentional design on our part. Uh, they don't have a one-to-one -one device. Not really appropriate, we felt, at that level. So they require printed packets of material to work on. We have some students who may or may not have internet connectivity at home. So we have to make provisions for those that don't have the ability to connect to the internet. If you have that ability, you can be more interactive with our teachers who will be teaching from home. If you don't, you'll have work that you have to do, and you may have to access the internet intermittently, and we have some provisions for that as well. But we've got to make sure that our students get those materials, the printed ones for those that need print, and the device for those that might not have their device at home. There's also the need for ensuring our students can obtain personal items that might be necessary to them. One might immediately think, well, you know, we had a, a, a pretty chilly morning Friday and not so chilly on the way home, they may have left their coat at school. Some students, that might be the only coat they have, they may need to pick that up. More importantly, however, we have students who have medication in our schools. Some of that medication they cannot replace at home because of the way the prescriptions are written and the restrictions that are on those prescriptions. So we have to make a provision for those parents to come and pick up the needed doses of medication. So there will be activities occur throughout this coming week 
not requiring students to come to school, but providing opportunities for parents, for students to pick up needed items to get their device. We also included in this information, uh, we I think share with you our ability to, and we've already done this, amp up our Wi-Fi signals so that at every location in the district, you may pull into the car line or parking lot and receive a Wi-Fi signal that also goes back through our filters. Now we'll be giving families some directions about that. We don't want to create a congregation of people at the school. You need to remain in your car, you need to get out, because there's certainly a lot of advice out there that it's good to be outside, but if you get out, you're gonna to have to spread out. Uh, but, and is also providing some information where there are other free Wi-Fi options in various aspects of our community. A lot of these things, as, as I noted, we've, we've been working on for a number of days. Uh, this has simply accelerated what we're doing, but there's still work to be done on some of the details of all this. In some areas, we know we must have a plan to address this, and we're working to put those in place. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't at this time recognize there are a number of people sitting in here, some that are not physically here this afternoon. Our staff has done an incredible job dealing with this extremely unusual and fluid situation and making sure that we're doing everything we can do to continue as we've done with regular instruction until the point we, it is not uh, in our best interest or we're not allowed to do so or it's not in the safety or health of our students and staff to do so. They have worked tirelessly to put together the framework and the details. The framework's one thing, the details have required a considerable amount of work. Uh, so there are a lot of folks in here, there are people that aren't sitting here today, and the principals and the staffs in our school, they've all done a great job in managing something that most, we've not seen exactly this before. And you all, I would uh, also like to express my appreciation to you all, each of you as board members for your support throughout this process. Uh, you're staying connected with us, so we're keeping you informed of the actions that we're taking. Uh, I think that covers most of the points other than one other major item, and then I would uh, certainly take any questions that board members might have, though the answers for some of those we might still be working on. Uh, although they're sitting out there, they're still thinking about what, what the next step is at this point in time. It is our intent uh, to continue to ensure that our employees are paid. Every employee on the pay schedule that they are accustomed to receiving a check uh, electronically now, every two weeks. So even those employees that would be normally working at a school from now until the end of March, they're gonna get paid as if they were. Now, should we be required to make up those days then we might have to require those employees to work, and they would not work with additional pay. But at this point, for the short term, we would continue to pay those employees on that schedule. That's important to our individual employees, particularly to our individual employees, and to their families. It is also extremely important to our community. Every two weeks, we generate a $24 million payroll. If that were to be lessened even by the amount of the individuals who routinely work in schools, that throws yet another challenge into not just the economy in general, but specifically into our local economy. As you all know, uh, most of our payroll is expended in the local market. So it, that's directly affecting, were we not to do that, would directly affect not only our employees, but local businesses that are very dependent on those dollars. Now at some point, we may need to come back to you all and ask for some, uh, some additional action on what we might do regarding that pay. But at this point, that's the way we plan to handle that. And it has been a number of years, but it is consistent with what we did more than 10 years ago. when We had a little bit of an extended break because of inclement weather. It was not a period of time as long as this period but it was a little more than our normal, usually over the course of time, we miss about three and a half days a year, and they're not usually even all three and a half in a, in a row. Uh, those are the most salient points I wanted to make certain that I covered. 
and I certainly would be uh, more than happy to answer any questions uh, that I might at this time. I would like, uh, are, it, do any of you have questions? Ms. Bush, anybody? Chris? Oh, I, will. Uh, I would like to thank the staff for coming in around the clock and working on a program to put in place. Um, I, I always say that our district is ahead of the game and um, when we were pulling up uh, the governor's uh, live broadcast, uh, Mr. Brown made sure that it came in clearly and we could skip all those commercials, so I appreciate that. <laughs> it was very enlightening. But I know um, parents have questions, Dr. Worcester, and people have questions about what they're supposed to do with their children for two weeks. And I know the safety and well-being of our young people is of the most importance. Um, but also, these parents now are not sure where they are going to, um, how they're going to manage with their jobs and so forth. And, I don't think, I don't see a problem with our school board trustees saying, yes, we should pay our employees. I don't think that would be uh, even a thought that we would, and, and you know, encumber, but I, I, I would probably ask the board once that comes to point. But um, how do you deal with the parents and um, what they're to do with their children and, you know, their Maybe their bosses aren't as um, understanding as you or our governor. Um, so how, how do we make sure that these children are going to be taken care of and you, uh, fed? Uh, how are we going to get meals to children who do not have food at home and, the, and that's depend a, on food here at school? That, that's a good point, and that, that is something we can help parents with. I, I didn't mention that. It's in the material we sent to you, but I did not mention that specifically. We, every summer, operate a summer feeding program at various locations throughout the county. We have already applied. We did that last week for the appropriate waivers to put that in place should we be out of school. And I, all those waivers have been approved. Uh, our Food and Nutrition Services staff is ready to move forward. And as far as I know, that will take place for the first time tomorrow. And the information has already, I believe Mr. Waller is uh, affirming that, that information has already gone out through the media to our parents. We're also providing, uh, uh, as you know, we have the ability to telephone message all parents, and they'll be getting a message this afternoon, which may have already gone out. If not, it's going out with some information like that. Unfortunately, beyond that, we're not going to be able to be very helpful about what they might do with their children during the day, other than for us to provide as many instructional activities as possible to help them keep them occupied. But the supervision, unfortunately, is not an area we're going to be able to help them with. And obviously, as, as you all know, and, 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 the, and, and anybody uh, following this would understand, one of our prime considerations in what we've done is our youngest children who don't have supervision at home if you send children home on days when their parents are working, normally working. There are a lot of employers, a large number of them, where they have said to their employees they can work from home, but that's not every employer doesn't have that ability. That's been a factor in, in what we've done. Again, not sacrificing anyone's health or safety. The other consideration to us is uh, a number of our employees, a number of our children, have parents who are employees of the largest employer in Greenville County, and that's the health system. So that perhaps creates an additional burden on our health care system when we have those students at home. But at this point, that's not a choice that we have, and it's not the most prudent thing uh, based on the governor's announcement and the information that he has about how this might be spreading and their desire to use the phrase that a number of uh, folks in that uh, arena use to flatten the curve. It's not consistent with us doing that, so it will likely also create some additional degree of hardship uh, on the healthcare system because of that. 
<laughs> Dr. Cristobal. Yes, um, thank you very much, Dr. Royster and I, and all the staff and board who have anticipated, prepared well, and were ready to move as needed. And I recognize that just as we're pushed a little bit before that moment, all of our families are as well. So thank you for that sensitivity about that. And I know we have tried to keep our population educated about what's going on regarding prevention, symptoms, um, what to do if you are ill or caring for someone ill through CDC recommendations. But those things are changing so fast. Can you tell us what our district can do to stay in close communication with those families who really need to help understand what to do, how to help their children understand what to do, how to make sense of social distancing and so on. Um, given that not everyone receives news in the same way, but they have come to rely on this district for a lot of important information and I'd like to believe that we can continue to serve them in that way during this time. And to your point, we'll certainly continue to do that. Now we'll be limited to doing it across social media platforms. Uh, we may be limited to doing that uh, in addition to social media platforms through telephone messaging. We can do some of that. But really kind of all our messaging is here's the link to the experts as opposed to us giving them advice. Here's the link to CDC's direction. Here's the link to if we have other, whether it's the National Institute of Health or the Department of Health and Environmental Control, whoever that might be to give them a link to that. Uh, now, you know, there, there's certainly no issue as long as people don't do things they ought not to do uh, on our property, which we would address by we will have stepped up and enhanced security patrol on our property during this time. Uh, anybody can pull in and use that Wi-Fi. So it's not, we're not saying only our students might use that. Now realize that we have all these filters in place, so uh, they won't be going places we would not want children to go, but you can pull up in your car at any of our schools in the drop, car drop-off line or in any parking lot. We've, we've amped the signal up enough that you should have coverage there. You could pull in and download whatever you wish to download or access immediate information if you wish to do so. And we think that's also a service not just to our parents but to our community if they wish to take advantage of that. And you'll be keeping notifications on our Facebook page and all the other places. That right. You at, at this point, our plan is our 12-month employees will remain at work. Now, we will be moving to a, a summer-type schedule for 10s. Uh, that so we can realize uh, while, while there's, we're not seeking this opportunity, but there's an opportunity for us to reduce energy costs by running the schedule we run in the summer. There may be a point in this process where it is no longer prudent or safe to bring our 12-month employees in. Then we would be able to do those things remotely from home that we need to continue to do to provide the most essential services and communication that we can provide. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wells. Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, so, so you mentioned the students be able to come in and pick up Chromebooks, but if there are students, families who have transportation issues, will we be able to use our, our buses to deliver those materials? Yes. We're, now we're looking at how that, how that might look, how we might best do that. We're giving consideration, should, should we actually have them ride in on them and, and get it? Or should we try to deliver it out to stops? And we want to make sure that we're clear that we're always complying with the governor's order. So we need to seek some additional clarification. But one way or another, we'll use our resources to get those devices in the hands of our students. Those that, in some places, they don't routinely take them home every day. And even if they do, they may not have taken it home to a Friday, I mean, you know, that's just, that's just the nature of, as you know, the nature of students sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then similarly, our summer feeding program also, we, we usually have our van that goes out and does some, some places, mm -hmm. some lunches, so are we gonna also be utilizing our 
vans to go out and do some summer feeding? We may do that, but we also have the authority within uh, my understanding of the governor's directive and my conversations directly with the state superintendent that if we were to need to use our buses and our bus drivers to make deliveries related to that, that we can do that. But we think we're good with the sites that we have. And as a reminder, those sites are not, they're, they're determined by the socioeconomic status of the schools in that community, but the meals are not limited to students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. The meals are available to any student who, who, show, who comes to that site, regardless of where they go to school. Well, thank you for saying that, because that was one mm -hmm. clarification I wanted to make clear, too. Just because mm -hmm. these schools are the ones that are open, that doesn't mean only the students that attend those schools have access to those meals. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't have to be students. They, yeah, they have to be school, school age. age. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so if they're homeschooled, if they're... Mm -hmm. If they've gone to private school or whatever, they have the opportunity to come. <coughs> Correct. Yes. So that's great. So outside of that, we're going to have, we're going to continue operations with all the other work. So construction projects that are going on are going to continue at this time. Contractor work that we have going on in terms of any sort of replacements, HVAC, roofing replacements, all that will continue as normal, right? At, at this at time. The, at, yes, ma'am. Uh, great point. At this time. Could, could change Monday or Tuesday, but it, at this time we're proceeding with any project that we have underway, whether it's in a uh, self-performed project by our maintenance employees or the larger the contracted projects. We intend to move forward with those. Again, such a fluid situation, don't know how long we'll be able to maintain that status, but maybe we'll not have to change that at all. Okay, and then uh, teachers are going to be available. So I've, I've seen some comments from parents already that I can't help my student even if you send something home. So. Mm -hmm. Our teachers are going to be working and available to students from their own homes, At right? Monday and Tuesday, we'll have them in to finish out all the lesson plans they need to, to have because we've got to be able to make print copies for people that don't have access, that sort of thing. As quickly as we can get that work done, then we'll, we'll send them on. Then the directions to them it will be during the normal school hours, so depending on whether you're elementary, middle, or high, your normal school hours, our expectation is you are there at your device where you may respond immediately within a reasonable amount of time to your students. In other words, you're, they're learning from home and you're teaching from home. Right, right. Fo following our current calendar, there's some days off in this period of time. I believe there's one day, and there's a day that was originally scheduled as a student uh, day students wouldn't attend. But it's a makeup day because we've missed a day, and we'll be using the makeup day and at, just as if they were still in school. Well, I, I'm going to say in advance, I appreciate what our teachers are going to be doing for the next two weeks or the next week and a half because they're going to have their own children too. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine they're going to be answering those calls mm -hmm. and dealing with their own children. And, and I know it's, you know, it's going to be a, a new task and a new challenge, but I know that our teachers who deal with a classroom full of needs day in day out will be able to rise to that challenge so I appreciate that I think similarly uh, I'd like to be sure that as this changes and and as we don't really know how it's going to go I'd like to be sure that this board is able to take actions as necessary mm -hmm. so um, in that light what I'd like to do is offer uh, a motion to revise <coughs> one of our board policies um, currently our board policy requires that you must be in physical attendance for a meeting to actually participate and have a vote. And in light of where we are, and because we don't know where we might be next board meeting or even in the next you know, month to six weeks, I would like to move to revise, I would like, no, I'd like to move to suspend BCBG to allow for individual board members to participate and vote via electronic means for the current state of emergency pertaining to COVID-19. So there's a motion on the floor. I would entertain second. a second. Okay. Right. Any discussion? Okay, so the motion on the floor. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, did you say during the state of emergency? Just to clarify. She said pertaining said, to. I said before. Would you like for me to? Perhaps during. Okay. During the state of emergency. So, so with, with, without an objection, the maker of the motion would ask that I revive my motion to suspend BCBG to allow for individual board members to participate and vote 
via electronic means during the current state of emergency pertaining to COVID-19. One clarification, if I could, Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. Doug, do we need to include in that that the governor is the one that establishes the state of emergency? I, I don't think matter. so, sir. I, I think he's the only one under law that can declare a state of emergency. That, so that's <clears throat> by law uh, read into the, that okay. motion. Ms. Grayson, is second. Okay. All right. So, any discussion? We are now voting on to suspend BCBG to allow for individual board members to participate and vote via electronic means during the current state of emergency pertaining to COVID-19. All, yes, sir. Mr. Meek. Oh. I was just thinking, uh, I, I agree with the motion. I don't disagree with that, but if we, if we, you know, he's declared an emergency, a state of emergency for two weeks. If he declares another, and after two weeks, do we, are we gonna have to vote on this again? I'm thinking that's why we're saying during, because this could extend, we don't know the unknown. And because of that, I think the key word is during, and it pertains to this specific uh, situation. Yes, sir. That, that is the reason why that we added in the last part of that motion pertaining to COVID-19. So it could be expanded length and duration. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Chris Ball. Yes. Um, similarly, if this board decided that we wanted to extend it, the governor said two weeks is enough, and this board decided that not enough had changed by then, and we felt like we needed to extend our position for a month. Would would we be still pleased with the wording of this motion? Or would we wish that we had said for the duration of this emergency rather than the declared state of emergency? Because that would be then our determination of when the emergency has, has ended. And, and, and yes. yes, please. Um, that, that would require an additional vote. This motion would, would get you through the state of emergency, even if that is expanded in duration. But once that is, has ended, then the board could vote to extend it um, with different verbiage. Okay, um, I, I would prefer to keep it as it is. Okay. Yes. What, one thing I would say is, well. in light of <coughs> where where we are today in, in society, not knowing what we're going to be dealing with, um, I would, when we get to a sense of normalcy, I would like to knew that we changed the policy. So I mean, right now we're suspending the policy so that we can do this. I think at some point the board may want to come back and look at the policy to see if we're still in line with the way everyone else is doing business to allow for that. So to your point, I think it's something we can visit, revisit at a later date to actually amend, the, change the policy itself versus just suspending it like we are now. Okay. But at this time, this is the motion on the floor. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please address by raising your right hand. All opposed, your right hand. The motion carries. If he, uh, I would entertain a, a Mr. Lewis. I, 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 mean, I, I primarily just want to say thank you to the superintendent for the staff. I know that the last several weeks have been incredibly fluid. Um, and I, I really appreciate the amount of information you guys have provided to us. This motion, I think, addresses some of the questions I had about how can we support you, but I, I'm just interested to know, are there are there any other things that this board could do to either support you during this time and staff during this time? And, and specifically, I'm wondering about, we have meetings that are scheduled over the next few weeks. Um, would, you, would you recommend that we continue meeting as if we have been, or should we postpone some of those meetings? I'm thinking about like our finance, meeting and our upcoming budget meeting. Yeah, I think you, uh, you, you 
you bring forth some, some good points for consideration. First, let me express my appreciation for your recognition of the, the efforts of the staff and the administration. Uh, and I certainly want to, again, express my appreciation for the support of this body. We've, we've sent you all a lot of information. And uh, you, you all have asked us a, a, a few questions, as, as you should, clarifying questions. But thank you so much for the support of the things that we're having to do. As we move forward, there may be some things, as this extends over time, if it does, that we need to come back to you and ask you to act upon, perhaps related to how we deal with employee pay. Uh, if it goes past uh, the end of the month, which I think that may be very likely. At this point in time, I think certainly there are some implications about meetings we have coming up. I believe the budget <laughs> workshop is March the 28th. Don't, don't, don't hold me 26, to the day. 26. 20, 26. We're still working towards that. That We might need to look at that and perhaps go work with the chair and poll the board to see if there might be an alternate date. We can push that down a little bit. It's not going to, I think, affect our timeline. We also don't yet know what the legislature may do. At this point, uh, I know many of you were on your way in here so you didn't get to hear everything the governor said. Others of you might have been here already and heard a little bit of it, but uh, uh, at this point, the, his action doesn't apply to the legislature, doesn't apply to elected or governing bodies, still leaving that up to those entities to make those decisions. That may change in the next several weeks. So if it changes the legislature's actions on the budget, it probably means we might need to push ours back a little bit. Uh, your other uh, meeting that's scheduled for the end of the routine, end of the month board meeting, I think you all have time in the next week or so to, to make a decision about that. I, I believe if I read the policy correctly, uh, the, bo the board chair could make that decision based on the policy that addresses emergencies inability of people perhaps to participate in meetings. There's some uh, caveats there. I certainly think it's something this body might well consider and should consider. I'm not sure that we would be in a position at this point this afternoon to give you a recommendation about it though. But I think those are good points and I think there are things that likely would be affected. The, the other question I had was um, in that line. I, so we're gonna now have hearings time where students are gonna miss instruction and then we're moving Uh, though uh, he's somewhat unrecognizable back there with his baseball cap on, I believe Dr. McCreary's back there in the back. Uh, and, and he has worked on a, a draft that, that we'll be glad to share with you all. Had him started on that already, but then uh, the state superintendent in, during the conference this afternoon made clear it is her intent to seek a waiver from the federal government on testing. Uh, I believe that while I won't say that's rather automatic that it be approved, it's my understanding it probably is in this case. And she's also seeking a waiver on state required testing that might be beyond that required by the federal government. Uh, now what all that looks like, I don't know. Indiana, Ohio, and the District of Columbia have already done so, if I've kept track of the, the, the list correctly. Um, certainly, I think it would be Doug may want to uh, to opine on this, but it's directly related to the topic of this meeting. <laughs> Perhaps you all want to consider issuing a resolution to support her actions in that regard while you're here tonight. I don't I don't see that that would. Uh, I'll defer to Mr. Webb certainly, but that might be a good thing for for you all to do. Thank you for bringing that forward. I think procedurally, we're falling under the umbrella of 